Hey everyone, I'm Kareem and in this video I'm going to implement a mobile application with Flutter. This mobile app is going to be a chess clock. If you don't know what a chess clock is, don't worry about it, this is more like a programming video. I'm going to start first by creating a new project using Flutter create command. And this the project name will be chess clock. After it finished, I will enter the project directory and run Flutter run which will run the app in the emulator I already started. Then I'm going to open this app in Vim in another window. So right now I'm on another window here. Next, um, I need to remove this default home page and I'm going to instead use my own chess clock screen which I will create in a second. And I don't need this scene either. So this screen is going to be stateless widget as far as I know right now. And because it's a screen, it should return a scaffold widget. So the content of this widget should be two timers. So a bit of background about the chess clocks. This application you put between two chess players and whenever a chess player makes a move, he will click on his side of the timer to stop his timer and start the other player timer. So in here I'm going to use a column widget. And we should render here two chess clock timers, so I will put it in another widget. I'm going to call it chess clock timer. And let's create this widget. So I'm going to create it in the chess clock screen folder because it's very unlikely it will be used anywhere else. So this will be also stateless widget. And here it should just uh, render some text in the center. This text will be the timer, right? So I'm going to use a center widget and the text wi widget to render the text. Also, I'm going to make the font size a bit bigger so we can see it. Okay, let's give it a try so far. So I'm going to import this widget here and I'm going to import the screen. And also I don't need this window in here because I'm not going to use it anymore. So right now we have two timers stacked on top of each other. Um, but I would like to, to wrap them with expanded widget to make them uh, fill the whole space. So you can see right now it looks much better. Next, what I need is that the top clock should be rotated 180 degrees so that uh, from the other player perspective it will be correct. So there is another widget in Flutter called Rotated Box. And it has a property quarter turns. Quarter turns. And if we give it the value of, of 2, this will rotate this, the children by 180 degrees. Let's give it a try. So this is what we want, but only for the top widget. So I'm going to, re to to pass here a boolean is reversed. And I will give it an initial value of false. In case it was true, this value will be 2, otherwise it will be 0. And for the, the top timer, I'm going to set its value to true. Next, what I want is um, is to have a different background color for this widget based on whether the timer is ticking or time is up. So I'm going to, to find the color of this widget here and I'm going to get it from a private message that I will create right now. And I will also expect two booleans to be passed to this uh, widget. Is time up and is ticking? And by default, they will be false. If time is ticking, I'm going to return a color orange. And if time is up, I'm going to return red. Otherwise, I will just return gray. Or actually, I will return black with alpha 30. I think this will look much better. 
So let me try the three states. So right now we have this gray color for both timers. If I set this to be true, so we should see um, red color. And is taking is true. Perfect. Also what I want to do here is uh, remove this hard coded timer and pass it from outside. But instead of passing text, I'm going to pass an instance of the duration class. And yeah, I will remove this one and I will get its value from a private method I will create in a second. So this method should re um, confer this available time in instance to a string, two minutes and seconds only. So there is this, oops. So there is this two string method on the duration class, which uh, will actually return our minute, second, and, and milliseconds. Let's see how it looks like right now. Um, but we need to pass this available time in the constructor as well. And for this one, I'm going to ask it to be required. So uh, if I have this annotation, it will give me warnings. So I will pass it here. So let's see how it looks like so far. So you can see we have uh, it renders hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. But what we need is only minutes and seconds, so we can cut this string from position two to position six. And there is a substring method on the string to do that. So this is all I need from this chess clock timer widget. Next, what I'm gonna do is implement the chess clock timer functionality using test-driven development. So hopefully it will be interesting.